Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Christ is among us. He is and always shall be. God bless you. Please have a seat for a moment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, most of the time we think of Thanksgiving, we think of the, the 1621 Thanksgiving at Plymouth Plantation, which has now been kind of mythologized into the, the origins of this national holiday, but it, it didn't immediately necessarily appear to be a national holiday at that time. It wasn't until much later that this holiday gained traction. And George Washington was the first to make Thanksgiving an official event and made a Thanksgiving proclamation. And for many years uh, here at St. Mary's on the feast, I would read his Thanksgiving Day proclamation of 1789. Um, uh, but it wasn't even that that really took off as a holiday. It was only until Abraham Lincoln started doing it in 1865 and establishing the uh, week in November, usually the whatever it is, the fourth Thursday or third Thursday, whatever it is. And uh, even then, he didn't establish it that way. But he started doing this annual thing in November with the with the Thanksgiving proclamations. And then after him, of course, presidents started doing it every year. But in between those two times. There was another president who did try to keep that tradition going that Washington started, and that was his immediate successor, John Adams. And so John Adams, two years in a row, 1798 and 99, I believe, um, offered Thanksgiving Day proclamations, but in his case, he decided to do it in April. There was no connection to November at the time. So I wanted to share with you uh, J uh, James, uh, John Adams, Second Thanksgiving proclamation from 1799, and if you if you uh, if you've seen uh, Paul Giamatti as John Adams, you know John Adams was a very could be a very uh, shall we say abundantly articulate president. He <laughs> liked to speak at length about certain things. He had a very very uh, very beautiful way of words that was uh, impressive. In, in, impressive in size as well as skill. <laughs> So his proclamation is a little bit longer than Washington's was, and, and you'll see quickly what I'm talking about as I read it. But I like it because, uh, one, it, 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 uh, it was 1799, April 1799, uh, the last year had been a kind of a wacky year in the history of the United States. There was what's called the XYZ affair with some, some pro that's kind of spawned a uh, quasi-war with France. Uh, there was, there was pestilences and illnesses that afflicted the nation at that time, so that's another reason I, I picked up on this one. Uh, so it wasn't the great, it wasn't just a rosy year for John Adams, let's put it that way. So he had a lot to be thankful to God for in that process. And so this is what he has to say, and I like it because in the end as he lists the ways in which the American people, he is calling them to pray to God. It sounds like uh, uh, one of the litanies from like the long litanies the deacon does at the mountains or at a feast of the vespers where he lists all the different things that we pray for. It's, it's, it's very similar. And also lastly, if you've never heard any of these, I always find them so refreshing because you see and hear how the founding fathers, uh, even though they were not orthodox in their, in their faith, they certainly had a, a profound respect for the Bible, for for uh, divine providence and for the Lord. And you'll hear that here. Thanksgiving Day, 1799, by John Adams, the President of the United States, a proclamation. As no truth is more clearly taught in the volume of inspiration, nor any more fully demonstrated by the experience of all ages, than that a deep sense and a due acknowledgement of the governing providence of a supreme being and of the accountableness of men to him as the searcher of hearts and a righteous distributor of rewards and punishments are conducive equally to the happiness and rectitude of individuals and to the well-being of communities. Got that? That'll be a test. As it is also most reasonable in itself that men who are made capable of social acts and relations who owe their improvements to the social state and to derive their enjoyments from them 
should as a society make their acknowledgments of dependence and obligation to him who hath endowed them with these capabilities and elevated them in the scale of existence by these distinctions. May God. As it is likewise a plain dictate of duty and strong sentiment of nature, that in circumstances of great urgency and seasons of imminent danger earnest and particular supplications should be made to him who is able to defend or to destroy. As moreover, the most pernicious interests of the people of the United States are still held in jeopardy by the hostile designs and insidious acts of a foreign nation, as well as by the dissemination among them of those principles subversive of the foundations of all religious, moral, and social obligations that have produced incurable, incalculable mischief and misery in other countries, and as in fine, the observance of special seasons for public religious solemnities is happily calculated to avert the evils which we ought to deprecate and to excite to the performance of the duties which we ought to discharge by calling and fixing the attention of the people at large to the momentous, momentous truths already recited. So I have to do this, he's saying. By affording opportunity to teach and inculcate them by animating devotion and giving to it the character of a national act. Got that? No. Are you completely lost? It's okay. Yes. It's okay. For these reasons, I have thought proper to recommend, and I do hereby recommend accordingly, that Thursday, the 25th day of April next, be observed throughout the United States of America as a day of solemn humiliation, fasting, and prayer. When they called for days of thanksgiving, it wasn't just jump into the feast. There was always a day of fasting and humility before God. That the citizens on that day abstain as far as may be from their secular occupations and devote the time to the sacred duties of religion in public and in private. You're supposed to go to church, that's why you get the day off. <laughs> that they call to mind our numerous offenses against the Most High God. Confess them before Him with the sincerest penitence, imploring His pardoning mercy through the great Mediator and Redeemer for our past transgressions, and that through the grace of His Holy Spirit we may be disposed and enabled to yield a more suitable obedience to His righteous requisitions in time to come. So invoke the Holy Trinity that he would interpose to arrest the progress of that impiety and licentiousness in principle and practice, so offensive to himself and so ruinous to mankind, to stop sin, that he would make us deeply sensible that righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people, quoting the scriptures, that he would turn us from our transgressions and turn his displeasure from us, which is almost exactly what our prayers say, that he would withhold us from unreasonable discontent, from disunion, faction, sedition, and insurrection. Use those prayers. That he would preserve our country from the desolating sword. That he would save our cities and towns from a repetition of those awful pestilential visitations under which they have lately suffered so severely. And that the health of our inhabitants generally may be precious in his sight. That he would favor us with fruitful seasons, and so bless the labors of the husbandman, as that there may be food in abundance for man and beast. That he would prosper our commerce, manufactures, and fisheries, and give success to the people in all their lawful industry and enterprise. That he would smile on our colleges, academies, schools, and seminaries of learning and to make them nurseries of sound science, morals, and religion. That he would bless all magistrates, from the highest to the lowest, giving them the true spirit of their station. Make them a terror to evildoers, and a praise to them that do well. Amen. That he would preside over the councils of the nation at this critical period, and enlighten them to a just discernment of the public interest and save them from mistakes, division, and discord. Amen. That he would make 
succeed our preparations for defense, and bless our armaments by land and by sea, that he would put an end to the effusion of human blood and the accumulation of human misery among the contending nations of the earth by disposing them to justice, to equity, to benevolence, and to peace. And that he would extend the blessings of knowledge, of true liberty, and of a pure and undefiled religion throughout the world. And I do also recommend that with these acts of humiliation, penitence, and prayer, fervent thanksgiving to the author of all good be united for the countless favors which he is still continuing to the people of the United States and which render their condition as a nation eminently happy when compared with the lot of others. <laughs> now that's a present. God bless. May you have a wonderful and happy Thanksgiving. Amen. Christ is among us. He is in our shelter. Would you like to wish?